As object-oriented programmers, we're used to the idea of encapsulation. We combine data and functions together into objects, and this allows us to create classes that mirror things in the real world, like people, products, and processes. Android takes the idea of encapsulation and extends it to include interactivity, and we call this concept activities. The easiest way to think of an activity is to just think of it as a screen that the user interacts with. Ideally, the screen does something very specific. Since most devices are constrained with respect to screen real estate, our design process needs to be compact. We design activities to do one thing, and the activity has everything it needs, including data, logic, and the user experience elements needed to make it happen. Activities have their own life cycle, and it's very important that you understand the life cycle. So let's create a project that will explore the activity's life cycle. To do this, I'll just create a new project, and I'll use the standard Android blank app template, and I'll just call this Activities Lifecycle Demo. Okay, I'll close the Getting Started screen and open up my Solution Explorer just so we can remember what's in here in the so-called blank template. There's a lot in here, and it's not really blank. So let me open up, actually we want Resources, Layout, and I want to remind you that there is actually a runnable app in this template already. It's your basic Hello World app. It's got a button, and then it's got some code that responds to that button. So just a reminder that that's in there. We're not going to use any of it. Let's go over to Main Activity, since that's where all the action is. And now I'm going to close up Solution Explorer so that I have a little bit more room to show you around. So inside of our activity, you can see that the class is called main activity. It doesn't have to be called main activity. It can be called whatever you like, but the template always starts you off with main activity. It does inherit from activity. That's how we know that's what this is. And we can see there's some code in here, again, already wired up for our little button demonstration. I'm going to get rid of this since we don't really need any of it to do what we're about to do. And then I'm also going to go ahead and get rid of this line on 14 where it initializes a counter variable because again we're not going to do any of that. So now we've got an app that has a button in it but the button isn't going to do anything and that's fine. Okay you can see the template gave us one override here. This, these are going to be overrides for the various events that are firing throughout the life cycle of the activity. Naturally as you might have already divined on create fires when the activity is first created. And remember activities interact with something called the backstack. So their life cycle is really all about where they are on the backstack, when they're created, and then as they move to the top of the backstack and they have focus and the user can interact with them, and then the user will do something that will swap an activity out of a backstack. You can only have one activity at the top of the backstack at any given time. So let's take us through the different events that fire when that occurs. So I'm going to start with the onStart method. And as you're overriding these virtual methods, you have to always remember to call the base before you do anything else. So I'm going to call base.onStart. And now I'm just going to put a console message out. I'll give it a bunch of plus signs so it'll be easy to see in the output window. And while I'm at it, I should go ahead and do that for onCreate. So I'll just be efficient. Some people say programmers are lazy. I say we're just efficient. I'll be efficient and I'll say onCreate fired. Very good. All right, so we're kind of going in order. The first thing that happens is onCreate fires and then on start fires. And the next event that will fire is called on resume. Okay, so let's call our base method. And now I'll just add that same message. Naturally, I'll just change this so that it says resume. And this is what I like to call the front half of the process. So an activity gets created, it then fires on start, it then fires on resume. Once on resume fires and is finished firing, the activity is at the top of the backstack and the user can actually interact with the activity. 
Now let's go ahead and create the other side of this where the activity is moving down on the back stack. So it starts with on pause. As before, I'll go ahead and call the base method. And then as the activity is finished pausing, it moves into a state called stopped. So we'll say protected override void on stop. Call the base as always. Never forget to call the base. It's very important. And now we're at something of a crossroads. So the, at this point, the activity is swapped out of the top spot on the back stack, but it's still on the back stack. It hasn't been removed from memory. So there's two possibilities here. Either you don't come back to this activity and eventually Android realizes that you haven't used the activity in a while and it cleans it up. It removes it from the back stack. If that happens, then it's going to call an event called on destroy. There we go. And there we go. So on destroy is going to fire when Android removes the activity from memory. This isn't usually something that's in your control. It is possible to go ahead and run things in here like cleanup routines and things of that nature. But remember, C Sharp has strong garbage collection, so you don't really need to worry about it that much. This is just sort of a shout out if you're used to working, say, with an iOS device and objective C and you really need to worry about cleaning up after yourself. You don't really need to do that in C sharp. It does most of that for you. The second possibility here is if the activity is going to be used again. Let's say for example you have an activity that fires and it's got a button and you click the button and the button launches a settings dialog that comes up where the user interacts with a settings dialog, changes a few things and then maybe clicks OK and that swaps your main activity back onto the top of the back stack. When that happens, there's an event that's fired called on restart. So let's go ahead and add support for that. On restart is the last event that we need to cover, so so all I need to do now is try it out in the emulator. I'll start my emulator by pressing F5 on my keyboard. With my emulator launched, I'm in my output window. If you don't have your output window handy, you can bring it up with view and then output. But with my output window displayed, I can actually see the messages that are in there when the emulator started. So I can see on create fired, on start fired, and on resume fired. Now I'll go back into my emulator and I'll manipulate this activity's position on the back stack by going home. And when I do that, I can see that on pause and on stop have both fired. If I go back into the emulator and I go back into the activity, I can see that restart and then start and then resume have all fired. So that's basically it. That's the entirety of the life cycle. Eventually garbage collection will clean up my activity if I'm not using it anymore. So I guess that's really it.